Okay, back on the Warframe, back on the Warframe bandwagon. It's a beautiful Warframe day, a uh, beautiful Warframe day in the neighborhood. And today is, I believe, the remaining Warframes um, I have left to go. So let's see, let's see which are, which are the ones that I have left. This is showing the kit and showing uh, showcasing the abilities and showcasing how the frame operates um in mission how each frame operate in mission and i have rhino here because rhino was the last frame i spoke with the ghosts and now i'm going to go straight into the video i'm not going to waste too much time with regards to this um showcasing as many as i can because i don't want to spend too much time like i did talking a lot about the game and everything rather than uh, showcasing but I didn't really talk a lot I just spoke on what I was going to do but I'm going straight into it in this one so next Warframe is Siren oh yeah and almost forgot um I was going to go back up I said I was going to go back up and then continue back down so I started from the top um the best Warframes and then I moved downwards so I started from all the way from Ash and I started and I moved downwards and I got towards um, uh, Excal and then I went towards uh, Garuda and um, spoke on, about Gara uh, and I didn't speak on Gauss which I said I was going to speak on and who didn't I speak on um, I spoke on Baruch so it was Gauss so today I'm going to speak on. I think I'll leave. I think I'll leave Gauss as, as my last video. So not today. Gauss will be like the best, the really, really, really great ones. I'm going to leave at the at the very end, at the last one. So Gauss will be part of the very end of the very best within the last video. So this is video five, and video six, which will be my last video, will be will have Gauss in it. So. I'm switching it up. I'm not keeping it standard. So Gauss will be in my last ones. Um, that's some of the best, one of the best Warframes. Um, so was on Rhino. Now I continue on from Rhino. Actually, Gauss. I must speak on it right now. Gauss. Um, Sarn. Um, Gauss Sarn. Of Saren, however you want to call her, Gauss Saren, um, Volt, Gauss Saren Volt, um, Gauss Saren Volt, Wukong, Gauss Saren Volt, Wukong, Vauban. And Cora. Those will be my best Warframes to talk about. Um, yeah. So Siren, Volt. Cora. Siren, Bolt, Korra. Wukong. Siren, Volt, Korra, Wukong. And I said Volbon. But in all truth, Trinity is, to me, is kind of better than Volbon. Um, because Volbon cannot heal himself. And after a certain time, if he fights again hard, against really hard enemies, he will die. Um, even though he's great at crowd controlling. Um, but I guess if you want to uh, support characters better, um, Vauban is what you would go for. Um, but you're talking about tank survival, I would say someone like Trinity. So it really depends. So the last video will have um, Vauban in it. The last video will have Sarn in it. The last video will have um, Gauss in it. The last video will have... Um, 
uh, Cora in it, and the last video will have um, Volt in it. So, yeah. So, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll make it even simpler. I'll start from the bottom. Um, the best one at the bottom, Wukong, he'll be in the last video. Best one at the bottom. Uh, Volt, he'll be in the last video. Then next up will be Saren. Um, she'll be in the last video. And then moving upward even more, um, I would say Korra will be in the last video as well. That will be the fourth one. And then um, last but not least, then I will go up even more and Gauss will be the last one. So those will be the last ones present in the last video because those are the top tier Warframes. And I guess you could put Trinity in there as top tier, but she's more like um, mid tier to, to top tier rather than top, top, top tier. So I already spoke about certain top tiers already. And now I'm going to speak about um, other uh, mid-level going to top tier rather than those that are directly at the top. Um, I already spoke about many that are directly at the top, such as Gyrus directly at the top, and such as, um, I guess you could say Ash is directly at the top if you know how to use them. But if you don't know, it, he would be considered mid-level, and you could say Baruch is directly at the top because he's fierce if you know how to use him. But if you don't consider him, um, to be that good of a crowd control, you could consider him mid level to top level, um, and then then you have someone like Nyx, which you which you would consider mid level, but in all truth, um, she's really high level due to her um, fourth ability. As long as you don't remove her fourth, but some people consider mid level to um, high level. Uh, those people really don't know how to use her that well, or consider it not to be pointless. Um, depending on if you're going to run into a mission where an Exumus will knock off all your energy and then cancel out your fourth anyway. Um, that's why certain people say that it's, it's not that useful. I'd rather put another type of ability um, to represent a fourth. But if an Exumus knock off all your energies to not do your fourth ability or any of your ability, it won't matter if you have her base fourth on or a switched out version to replace a fourth you won't be able to do the ability anyway so it's pointless to even argue that um so yeah those are the warframes i'm going to say in the last video it's going to be wukong it's going to be vault it's going to be sarn it's going to be um it's going to be uh Korra, and it's going to be gauss i saw it playing uh rhino i'm going to keep moving down and to find even more mid-level to high-level warframes um whereas they they reach closely to the top but they're still not the top so um moving from rhino um i am going to go now to i guess i could say i could go now to um volban um Vol okay, so Volbon, Trinity, um, Valkyr, and Wisp will be the Warframes I speak on today. Um, is Valkyr really that good? Yeah, she's a beast if you keep her fourth, fourth on and have 175% efficiency. And she's basically on dying. Um, so, yes, she's a beast. Um, as long as you know how to conserve her fourth, it's impossible for anyone to kill her when she has this her fourth on. Um, so yeah, those are Warframe I'll speak on right now. So first off is, um, the Trinity, and then I'll move down to Valkyr and Volban. Actually, I'll move on from, I'll start with Protea. I'll start with Protea because Protea is all also badass. Um... But I really, see, the thing is, I really have to um, consider characters like Octavia as well. She does high crit damage and she, her survival rate is also good. But because her, because her invisibility is something that's ridiculous, she's just pure base mid-level. Um, so that's why she's not in the higher high ups. And you could say the same thing for Protea as well. Um, because it takes so, um, even though she offers like health, and also offer, offer speed and also offer energy. Um, 
like if the, her, I, I guess you could say her fourth is kind of useless if you don't know how to use it that well or you don't understand. But as a, as a total, she's a very helpful Warframe. It's just that she's not better than a character like Wisp, in my opinion. Um, even though she gives energy to Warframes, and that's about the only really good thing. She gives health and energy with regards to that. And she does a little base crowd control. So I would say two out of her four abilities are good. So she was a standard Warframe in my opinion. And she's only good when it comes to certain specific missions. Um, some people consider her high level. But if you really think about it um, from the point of view of this uh, Warframe's capabilities. Um, her first ability is kind of pointless. Um, not many people use it, and when people do use it, um, it says here, tra uh, shrapnel vortex creates a slashing, staggering swirl of uh, shrapnels, uh, shields, blah 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 blah. Uh, can be um, um, configured grenades to work as uh, overcharging shields regenerator. So basically, uh, this this first ability allows her to um allows you to recharge your shields as as you're on character so it's kind of like a boost towards your um like a buff ability a boost towards shields uh kind of like the similar OG thing like what zero f asterisk 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 s given mode yeah i guess um Yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, if you, why I say she's still mid level, um, but she could go, she could still be in the high high level, is because like most Warframes, they they always have two abilities that that are good, and the other two abilities that are bad. Like the really good Warframes, um, have all of their kit that's good, all the first, second, third, and fourth. Whereas the middle of all Warframes always just have like two abilities that are good. So the first one is good, but not great. Because um, if you're fighting extremely high level enemies, then they'll knock that off um, all the time with a couple of bullets. Um, the second one is very good. However, it doesn't last for too long. Um, in fact... Even if you increase its duration to an extremely high rate, um, it really only stays active for a certain period and then it disappears. It's like it, the whole point of the second ability is simply to kill something within a matter of seconds and then goodbye, uh, I'll see you tomorrow or something like that. It really doesn't stay around for a long time and you really want it to stay around for a long time. Even when you attach high duration to it, it really pisses you off that it just doesn't stay around for a long time. So this is the only ability that's extremely high in damage, like ridiculous high in damage, that is a good thing and a bad thing at once. So in some cases, this, this ability is completely pointless because it is good, but at the same time, it's bad. And you don't want it to have any bad. You want it to stay good. So... This is kind of point. This is kind of good. This is better than this, in my opinion. So the first is better than the second, in my opinion. Even though the second does more damage and kills everything off, you just want the second to be on longer, and it doesn't stay on longer, which sucks, especially when you're starting to get surrounded by a lot of enemies. We're like, come on, you need the backup. So the first is good. The second is not that good. Now, the good ones really start with the, the third ones. The third one is your best one, your bread and butter. So with the third ability out, you don't have to worry too much about energy anymore or about health anymore. If you decide to increase its duration past a certain point, like if you increase its duration beyond what I already have right here, you'll get a full 60 seconds. I have it at 50, 50 point three eight seconds so almost a full minute and 38 seconds um yeah so that's self-explanatory i don't think i even need to get into that um that this the third ability is her bread and butter now the fourth ability is very good but you have to time it and if you're not good at timing when you should use it you can 
use the energy to do it and spend that energy not when you need it to spend the energy yes when you're about to die that's when you're supposed to use it the, the ability but that but that only works if you're paying attention to your health and paying attention to your your shields at all times when you're in high level missions not when you're fighting average joes because if you're fighting average joes you don't have to worry about dying that much but when you're fighting a high level enemies like level 100 and you're taking high level damage it only takes like 10 hits from an enemy that forward back side no matter where and then boom you're dead um or you do it at the wrong time um you do it too early when you needed to do it late so this is really based on you understanding the time of when to use this ability it's very good but you will have to understand when to use it not just to use it otherwise you'd be wasting the energy that's why i say protea is mid-level warframe she's she's crazy as hell and great to use because of her third ability and her first um because they both help each other even though at first it's not that good but it's it's good if you're talking about support the same as this one the third ability and you're talking about support but when you're fighting like extremely high level enemies past level 100 you start getting pissed off because your second ability doesn't stay on for a long period of time and you start also getting pissed off because you know you're shitty at timing things because you never know when the enemy is going to one shot you so you're scared and wondering like when is the enemy going to one shot but like you're waiting for them to do the one shot so you could do the rewind so you don't waste 70 percent of your energy drain so and and if you do it too early then you waste that um drain that's why i say protea is mid-level warframe so what i'll do is i'll just test test protea out on um standard enemies and then i'll test her against um level 100s and see how it works but before I, I do that before i even try to do that um what i'll do is i'll remove let's see what i have on 200 duration 130 duration okay so i'll remove this one actually what am i doing okay there okay so i'll remove this one and as her base her base strength is the standard for all warframes is based up 100 and then going upward no not that um and then going upward you have shields you have health you have energy you have armor so for her her shields are 450 why she has help um shields of that so high as a base at 450 because she's a shield type warframe um everything in her kit is based around boost towards health and towards shields uh or to keep the enemy away so that they at bay so that they don't um, take down her shields um and then her health is the standard health of 300 uh, for most standard warframes energy is the standard health of most warframes at 225 armor is the standard health of most warframes at 125 so she's an as an all-rounder warframe she's a standard these this is the setup for your standard warframe nothing too special except the shields she has a little bit more shields as her max rank of th um, 30 um at 450 just that one thing um her speed is about the standard speed of most warframe goes from 120 to 125. so her base kit is pretty average so based on that you could pretty much say that um 225 energy means i mean you could dictate what a warframe is from the beginning by just looking at their base energy and their health and their shields by base of 225 you know this warframe is mid cast level warframe which means the energy amount that will be pulled from her to do certain abilities aren't going to be 25 ng to cast an ability are going to be 50 percent energy to cast an ability to 70 percent energy to cast an ability see um let me show you as an example so right at base you have 20 25 for this one the smallest one and then then you have 50 
and then it goes up to 75 and then it goes up to 100 because that's what the base of your kit always is for every warframe like every warframe that has the all round the 100 and then it has the 450 300 225 and 125 all warframes that have this setup with exception to the shields because the shields is what is particular towards her she has a little bit more shields but everyone if you exclude the shields that has 300 this 225 this um 125 this and all around their 100 here uh with a 120 to 125 speed they will always have a setup like this 25 percent energy drain then it goes up to 50 then it goes up to 75 then it goes up to 100 but it would typically fall into the 50 to 75 ratio um yeah from that from that location so if you exclude the first one the first one will will always be the 25 um which means everything else you will need more energy for you, you're just getting lucky by getting the first one at 25 but as a standard everything will fall into the 50 and more range going up and if majority of your abilities are the ones that you'll be casting multiple times you will need a hell of a lot more energy and a hell of a lot more efficiency and if you don't want to use efficiency mod then you will definitely need something to give yourself energy back here now for protea i don't have any mo uh, any arcanes to give herself energy back here so this is bad so what you want to do is start off selecting your arcanes from the jump what arcanes you want on to increase this warframe survivability whether it's an arcanes towards their gun or arcane towards her um, energy to cast an ability multiple times now you're you might be saying to yourself well protea is not the type of warframe that needs to cast ability multiple times she only needs to cast two of those ability multiple times or at least just two of those abilities multiple times over a period of let's say 30 seconds so she doesn't need an efficiency mod she only needs um one mod and that one mod would be uh, multiple efficiency mods. She only need one mod, and that one mod would be Prime Flow. She'll only need Prime Flow and only need Arcane Energize. She doesn't need any more efficiency. She, her base could still stay at 100. She doesn't need 130. She doesn't need 175. She just need the standard Prime Flow that increase her overall energy from that 225 to that 638. So in that case, since you know this, and you know this Warframe's main, the one that you will be casting the most, or at least you want to have on the most, will be the first ability to cast down on the ground to give um, your character's boost to our shields if it runs out. And then the third one you want to cast on um, to do that multiple times. Then those are the only two ones you need to concern yourself with. And only use the second ability when you need to, to do that quick kills towards that heavy boss or that knock enemy or that that i guess that um exumus type that is very difficult to kill you want to do this when you need to that's that's all you really need to know the the your second and your last are things that you cast only when you need to but the ones that you will cast multiple times are your first and your second and if you time down how much duration you're going to have towards both of these um you don't have to cast them multiple times at all you're going to cast them like probably once or twice within a minute um so you don't need to have an efficiency mod you just need to have prime flow and arcane energize here so now moving up from that you would then decide well i can't survive against enemies that are level 100 and higher with this setup um i need to put in something to increase my health beyond um 300 because one shot from a level 100 could take a thousand of my health um down so so 450 plus 300 doesn't even make the cut or make the grade so i'll need to increase both my shields and my health so in order to just increase both shields and health you automatically have this so you already passed that thousand arm um, ratio without even putting on another mod which is your health mod which is vitality so you're already past 1,000 towards the damage an enemy does 
towards Portia for her survivability. So if you just want to have this mod on, that's great. But uh, it's not recommended because if they knock down that 700 shields, then all you have left is your 500, which they can kill you with the next couple of shots. I would say couple of shots, meaning next two shots. So you will definitely need that vitality on. Um, but if you're not concerned with shields, you don't give a damn about shields, you just want the health, boom, throw that on. Don't worry about shields. How things work in Warframe, you have to take down like, Warframe shields first before you get towards their health. If, and only if, the enemy is not using a weapon that has elemental damage on it. Like if they're firing off rounds towards you, just rounds. And that rounds do, doesn't have elemental effect in the rounds. It's just a bullet that has, like, say, cold proc effects. Or it's just a bu bullet that has corrosive um, effects. But, um, well, I shouldn't say corrosive effects. Cold proc effects. Or uh, a bullet that has, like, say, um, explosive effects. Um, but it doesn't have heat effects and it doesn't have toxic effects. Um, toxic and heat hits your health directly regardless so if they're if they manage to shoot at your shields and knock down the shields and if it's not toxic and if it's not healed it won't go towards your health at all um, an explosion of whatever element they have on their bullets will have to take down your shields first and whatever coal that they do towards your your shields um, won't take down shields it will cause your shields to um, I guess freeze up and then break uh, faster um, but regardless uh, it won't cause an effect towards your health it will just slow you down a bit but it won't decrease your health um, so yeah in order for an enemy to actually kill you they have to take down your shields but there are situations where they will have elemental effects on their weapons but most of the times is about taking down your shields first and then destroying your health. It's like fighting fighting an Eidolon. What do you have to do to beat an Eidolon? First thing you have to do is to beat an Eidolon, take down the shields. And then you can work on stuff like their armor, get past their armor, and then you can work on stuff like their health. Because if you take down shields and you aim directly for their health, boom, they die quick. But if they have heavy armor on them, they're not gonna die quick. That's why it's imperative like pretend like you're an Eidolon. Pretend like you're an Eidolon. You know your enemy is going to eventually take down your shields. So what you would need to and make sure you survive even longer or that you don't die straight out quick. You would then put on something like a steel fibers that boosts your, your, your shield to a higher ra ratio. But since this Warframe is a standard Warframe, because their already armor base is already low as hell, and I mean low, is a 125. This is not an armor-based Warframe. This is an average standard-based Warframe. So by giving it more armor, you're simply giving it more armor to increase its survival ratio more, rather than for this Warframe to be a tank. So you'll just give them the armor to increase their survival ratio more so that they don't die straight out once their shield goes down. So that's the only purpose of why you would throw on the steel fibers. Um, but if you really don't need the steel fibers, the solution to this, if you believe it doesn't matter if I throw on steel fibers, the enemy will chew through that armor of that little minuscule 200 and something easy because there's no great difference between going from 125 to two something. That's just 100 and something more. And you will be right in that case. And we can't go through that like it's um, a butter through knife or, or knife through butter. So in that case, if you notice already, you will then take the initiative and say, well, and and we can go um, go through your armor like knife through butter, but it will take them like 20 seconds for for that butter to kill me. Um, so that's where you're having something like adaptation on, or. If you don't want to put an adaptation, you would then throw on something like Rolling Guard because Rolling Guard would cancel out their elemental effects. But Rolling Guard won't cancel out the physical damage of the bullets they do towards you. So in a situation you would have, um, if it's not elemental damage, if it's direct straight damage, um, you would keep adaptation on. So 
that's what that's my solution for armor if they manage to take down your shields and start to go towards your health you'll be able to resist the damage for whatever it is that they're doing the damage type um, that they're doing towards you for a good 20 seconds um, this will last a hell of a lot longer than you trying to put steel fibers on to increase your armor to like additional 100 and something more um, it will work more effective, uh, effectively as well. So it's like you, you, you're giving immunity for like 20-something 20, 20 seconds. And it also the best part about it is stacks as well. So this might be something you want to consider more than to put on something like a Steel Fibers or to put on something like a Prime Vigor. And then your next thing you will want to go into after you put this on, you will then want to go into, um, since you're trying to determine okay so this is a warframe that an assistant warframe assist other warframe so if this is a warframe that assist other warframe great you put on something like a stretch for range but if it's just you in mission then you don't need that but in certain cases um regardless of whether you're with a group of people or not you still want range of at least I would say at least you're 145, if not 135. Um, I'll show the reason why. I mean, you technically don't need it, but I'll show the reason why. So once this is on, you have a radius of from the base of five now going to a 725. So depending on how far. Um, the little ball is circling around you um it will go onto the ground and it will affect the enemy based on this radius so it's not just about you having that little ball go around you it's also about the effect it will have within the enemy from taking uh, a damaging enemy that's on the ground once it goes into effect so you want to have a significant amount of effect to apply onto your enemy and also to apply onto yourself so that when certain um, shrapnels or damage in effect to boost your shields is in place, it will have to get past the duration range. Uh, I mean, not the duration, but the range itself in order to get towards you. So it's not simply about you getting your shields back based on the orb floating around you, but it's also about crowd controlling your enemies at a distance. Not every enemy is going to be within that 100 um 100 distance ratio you'll eventually get enemies coming from the left the right the back and the front and you want to have at least a good distance of 145 to get effects of all enemies that are going to run into it because they're going to be dumbasses and they're going to run into it so you want to have at least a decent range so 145 is decent range all around and it also that 145 also works um not with the third, um, more with well, I guess it works with the second more than anything else. Yeah, it works with the first and second. Um, so yeah, it will work with also the second as well. So if the enemy knock, like say knock units, is at a greater distance from where you are, um, and you happen to turn it on while they're charging towards you while you're turning away and facing towards other enemy but you see him coming and you want to kill him because he's an exhumus um, knock or he's a steel path knock and you see him coming and you know you'll spend you'll spend a ridiculous amount of time trying to kill him um killing him from a distance is best so that's where the um, 145 will come in also handy as well and the great part about the second ability, the second ability is not like your your rifle, your gun, or anything about that. Um, like that, once it aims towards the, its enemy or the enemies in front of them, and it sees that enemy, it's not going to okay. I got fall off and accuracy and all that nonsense uh, that you will have on your weapon. No, it straight up destroys them if they're right in front of them. Um, it doesn't miss and stuff because it's purely based. It's a power based on what's stated within this um, kit right here so it'll say 50 percent drain 500 damage duration of three seconds damage um, plus damage per hit is 100 percent range of 43.5 meters and firing arc of 130 
So if you're within that firing arc, your ass is dead. That's basically it. Um, that's all there is to it. There's no recoil. There's no um, accuracy mod or any of that stuff or firing rate. It just does what it does, and they're dead. Um, I guess if you increase the strength, you could say is the firing rate will increase, but I haven't seen it to be do that. I just seen it to do more damage that way. Um, okay, so the next thing with regards to the Warframe, you would go into, I would say, obviously is the the most obvious one. You saw it within the kit. It's the duration, and obviously you want uh, you want the second ability to do more damage. And in order for the second ability to do more damage, you it cannot just disappear after three seconds because the knock unit ain't gonna die within three seconds if it's a level 100 knock. So it's been dropped to 79. This is where the issue starts to come in because see, let me just keep this on for right now and try to see if I could fill in the other spots. So, this Warframe requires more ability strength for her to do her damage or or for her to get back um, the amount of energy she needs or the amount of shield that she needs to fill up faster also with ability strength so 155 so that's the next mod you want to have in there and the trouble starts here the last two obviously you want more strength then you start to look at the kit you have two more slots available you start looking at the kit you only need to use this one you need to use this you only need to use this one you need to use this the ones that you're really concerned about is your third more than anything so you're paying attention to your third more than anything your drain for your third your duration for your third and your extra pickup chance so you want more pickup chance you don't want 38 percent pickup chance you want it to be oh like um 75 percent pickup chance so you have 75 more percent of a chance to get more energy to get more health and to get more ammo like the bare minimum you want is 50 percent pickup chance the bare minimum so that's what you would need to focus on right now so that's what I'm going to do it will decrease your range and it'll really piss you off but um, the third ability is the one you want to focus on more than anything or maybe I'm just smoking and not paying attention to you know what let me let me do something. I'll try not fortitude because that decreased my duration. I'll try. I mean, I know my efficiency will go down, but I'll try blind rage and see what happens. I could mind to balance that off. So yeah, okay. So strength um, pickup is now at forty-five. It really sucks, but. Uh, might have to do it this way. Let's see what pickup is. Because it's now beyond 50. It's at now at 59. I really want to have my pickup to be at least at a bare minimum of. I mean, I already have it past the 50% ratio. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, so when you get to a situation like this and you run out of a, a capacity, just throw in your um, aura mod and you should be good. And depending on the situation that you're in, per each... Okay, since this Warframe will probably cast its ability that probably like once every 30 seconds, uh, this might not work out for you. The first one, Reef Respite. Um... And since you worry about more of enemies surrounding you, this might work best for you. To know where the enemy is coming from, um, that will work. But at the same time, your concern is your health and more power. 
Uh, more power allows you to do more pickups. More pickup chance. The more pickup chance you do, the more energy you get back, the more health you get back, the more ammo you get back from your third ability. And if you put coaction drift on, that allows it to go even more. But I'm not going to do coaction drift. I am going to do the guaranteed energy, not um, every 25. I mean, 25 percent for six seconds. I'm not going to get no energy for six seconds. I want a flat out energy of 15 um, percent. So now I'm at 250, and my third is at 60 so I'm good with 60 I'm good with 60 I'm 100% fine with 60 because regardless of how strong the enemy is whether they are level 100 whether they are level 15 whether they are level 50 or level 75 or level 150 or level 20 um, you always have 60% chance for pickup which means you have a little bit over half time to get what you want so um it won't be in the high radio i mean ratio of 75 percent to 100 that's where you really want to be and that will be anywhere from um the two i, I believe 280 to 300 to get that 75 that you need i don't believe it could go to a pickup of um 100 anyway i believe the max out you could have is 75 but if you can't get that 75 because you want to have certain things on lock, the best I would go for is 250. Where you could get that above that halfway point and you will still have 60, um, at least 10% more. And now what you could do in a situation like this, you could decide, do I want more duration or do I want uh, more efficiency? Based on the circumstance that you're in, um, you will look at your first ability You'll see how long it would take for the duration of the range that you have at 145. Um, that's going to be affecting enemies. It'll be 16, um, 16, uh, 16 seconds and 57. Uh, well, I keep saying 16 seconds. Well, I don't know why I keep saying that. It's not that long, so like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 seconds. I keep saying 16 seconds. Um, it's 16.57 seconds, so it's, it lasts longer than that. Um, it's like a, it's a, like a good while. Or maybe I'm, maybe I'm totally losing it or something. Um, but basically what I'm saying is this, this is kind of, it's good. Um, it's not great. You will want like 30.57 um, seconds, but this is good. This is good enough for you to kill enemies um, before they kill you. So that's fine. Um, efficiency is probably what I want. Uh, that's not good. 85%. Let's see where my... Um, that's 28. That's good. Um, that's 86. That's not that great, but I still I'm I'm still going to be able to do the ability. Um, that's 57. So 86 and 25. Yeah, they will both exceed um, the 100 um, energy pool. And if they both exceed the 100 energy pool, if I was to cast both these all over again. They will exceed the 200 energy pool. Um, they will go into like the 250. Um, and I have 638 here. So, yeah. So at the 250, probably 250, 300. Um, be able to cast the first ability and third ability more than once. Cast each of them twice. To get that 250 or a list a little bit above 250 and still have a reserve um enough reserves to cast them at a second and a third time so i would say at this ng amount 638 um 
This protea will be able to cast her first and her third ability at least four times each before she's completely void of energy whatsoever. But you're never you're never going to cast your third ability um, that many times. You might cast your first ability that many times, but never your third. So let me look at the. Let's try. Okay. Your second drain uh, drains fifty seven point point five. This ridiculous amount of damage. Range is still forty three point five meters. Arc is still the same. I uh, look at the fourth. Hundred percent um, NG reduction. Uh, actually, one hundred and fifteen. Um, that's not good, but it was better than the base standard hundred. Just it just went up by fifteen more. So that's not too bad. Duration is 10 seconds, uh, two seconds longer than the uh, base one. That's where you want it to be, to be honest with you. You don't want it to be eight, you just want it to be 10 going upwards. Um, implosion damage, um, that's fair. Not great, but it's fair. It's, it's at least beyond the halfway point. Um, explosion range, um, that's also fair. Uh, so everything about this Warframe is fair, except for one thing, um, it's efficiency. And let me check out the duration again. Yeah, 16.557, but you will never, you, the thing is you will never, um, you will never stay in a position for too long to waiting for your enemies to um for it to take effect on enemy you will typically kill the enemy straight out if once they're effective um but the whole point of this first ability is to keep it active within that era for an incredibly long time rather than to use it again um that's the only problem it's it's limited to 16.57 i mean if it was a full 30 then i would say that's fair but it's a little below par um but it doesn't take away that much so the only bad part of this is actually the duration time because even at 85 percent efficiency um that's 85 percent efficient i still have enough with uh, my energy pool up here and i still have the arcane energize here um so i'll test run this this is the setup i have um obviously once growing power kicks in that'll be 25 percent more energy which means this to 251 um it's going to go up to by a significant amount it'll be like in the two 270 something range or yeah to probably 279 i don't know um but it'll be in 270 something range which it'll means that uh uh the pickup ratio will also increase to the 70 75 ratio or maybe the 72 rather than it being 62 which is perfect for me because that means for a full 20 seconds or did it say six seconds six seconds yeah for a full six seconds i will get continuous um energy for that full seconds um so yeah so i'll test this warframe out and i'll see how it works um in mission if if it if this sucks then i know exactly what to do if it sucks i know exactly what to do I would have to drop it down to the 50% marker rather than keep it at the 60 and also increase my duration rather than my efficiency. Because if I increase my duration, I'll have to worry about casting multiple times. So it might cut my range if I increase my duration, um, knock it down from 145, which I don't like. But then that means I'll have to remove something like um, well, not this. I have to remove blind rage. I mean, not blind rage. I'll have to remove transient. And in a situation like that, I will have to increase another power slot to substitute for transient fortitude. But at the same time, don't have the negative effects of transient fortitude. Just if offer me more duration. So this is what this will be. Um, so 
this will will be the one that will be fine um, the standard 55 percent but before i even do that i'm going to use the transit to see how the transit work at the 17 um what was it 16 16 16 seconds yeah 16.57 okay so i'll see how the 16.57 16.57 works i'll just stare at it i'll just stare at it while i'm in mission and see how long it takes for it to go off and how many enemies are going to run into it while it's active because i'm not worrying about my shields coming back on um the power strength makes your shields go up faster based on that so that's not something i'm worrying too much about um if i I could always have that go up fast um, using another mod if that becomes a problem. But I, I just want to see, based on the duration period um, I throw down, how long it will take. So first I'll try this on standard enemies, then I'll try it on um, level 100s. So I'll cut the mic for now just to test this. Position has been compromised. Defend the cargo until reinforcements arrive. Yeah, that's not good. The duration period is too short. The base, the base you will want for this, for this to be, uh, where you want it to be, you want it to be thirty seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and done. And the enemy is still coming, so not good. Like if the if I wasn't in party with other people and that wouldn't work out to my advantage, I would have to cast at least four times before all these enemies are dead so 30 seconds is exactly what i thought would be the the standard for first ability um at least good enough to be considered for first ability because normally you'll be still be firing off and doing other things such as this but you want your first ability to be like your second hand to do its job and to be your backup it's like your first ability is your drone um it's a stationary one but you still want it to be doing killing while you're not paying attention you want to do killing in the background while you're focusing on killing and doing other things on your own terms 
So you want to have a certain amount of duration period before it goes away. And 16 seconds isn't good. You want to be more than 16. The standard, the, the, the standard should be 30 seconds. For an all-rounder, consider these are all all-rounder builds. These are not tank builds or um, long-range CC builds. These are all all-rounder builds. So you could use them in every mission, not just one or two missions. They're all-rounder. Now for long endurance run for all rounder missions. Because typically nobody stays in missions beyond 30, 30 minutes anyway. If we're talking about every person that plays Warframe. Not just one or two or diehards. The, the average human being. So what I'll do now, since I don't need to use um, the killing um, bot, I don't need to use second ability until a knocker or an extremely powerful Exumus comes out. Um, don't need to. Die. See, you only use your second ability on Protea if the enemy is super strong. If the enemy is a weak Exumus, your guns will take care of it. If the enemy is a super strong Exumus, your guns and your second ability needs to take care of it. So I'll skip the second and I'll go straight to the third. So this ability, third ability is, is based on duration period of 31 seconds. 30, well, rounded off 32. So this is good. The 30 second ratio is being respected and it has more than 50% chance to drop items so your chance rate of getting things that you want will always be half and half that's where you want to be you want to be a little bit above the halfway ratio just a little bit above so I think mine is at 60 something No, my pickup is at 87. How the hell did my pickup get at 87? I must have done something miraculous. Oh, I know what I did. I I know what I did. I increased the duration. I removed um, Transient 42. I increased the duration. Oh, that's another thing to remember about Protea. If you increase Protea's duration, it also helps with her pickup ratio. Obviously, your duration time will, will, won't stay on long. Will last for 30 seconds, but your um, pick pickup distribution will be um, within the 87% range. Right. 87% chance, which means you'll be getting a lot of stuff. See, you're getting a lot of stuff. 30 seconds of a lot of stuff continuously. Come on, keep giving me more stuff. Okay, so it sees, um, the, I guess you could say, the bot, the, the replenish bot sees that I'm full with energy and I'm full with health, so it stopped dispensing. So it dispenses again, replace the last two, and it drops out the next two. out more Drops out. so three times no yeah about three times at 87 at a 30 um, 30 second uh, duration period 
three, I say about three to four times did it drop out. So during 30 seconds, count it, every 10 seconds it drops two NG orbs, two health, and two ammo. So every 10 seconds, third ability drops out. So let's do that again. Do the math. That's one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I'm going fast with the count. That's ten. Oh, I keep forgetting. There's something also to consider. If uh, the wave says the wave is, has been completed, it would affect the drop off of power. It would cancel out. So let me do it again. So now starting. So that's one. That's two for that. Two, three. That's four. And now you could hear it, um, hear it when it's doing it, this thing. Um, it's dispensing. I mean, if you if you don't hear it, it, it doesn't matter at all. If you don't hear it, you just count um, one to ten. And every 10 seconds, it drops out something. Now that 10 seconds could be 10 seconds dropping out energy, or 10 seconds dropping out health, or 10 seconds dropping out ammo. But based on your drop rate, drop chance ratio, you have 87%. Um, percent. That's how much it will be dropped out. Every 10 seconds, you get dropped. So that's a that's a good way. Okay, so there he is. Okay, now he, now I do it. Oh, I'm aiming in the wrong. You know, I wasn't aiming in the wrong direction. I was aiming in the right direction. Okay, so that's that's something to know about um, Protea. Um, if you have um, enough power strength and enough duration, which means your base should always be 30 all around, um, nothing lower. You should count for your third ability every 10 seconds. Um, something is going to drop, at least. That's how it is. That's how it's always been. So every 10, ten seconds, something is going to drop based on how much duration you have. So let's say, for instance, you have a full minute of duration period. So every 10 seconds, your chance of... Well, let me let me go back. Every, ten, every, every 10 seconds, your... Okay, so every 10 seconds, your chance of... Um, which it was a pickup of 82 during the time, but in mission it, it jumped to a higher amount. But so every 10 seconds of that 30, um, 31.88 seconds of it staying in mission, there's going to be a drop. So it's not like it's going to drop like continuously over and over again for 31, um, for like every second or so, or every five seconds is going to drop something out. Uh, don't, it drops things out every 10 seconds um, so even if you increase your duration to like a full minute or something it won't matter it will drop something out every 10 seconds um, plus it also says it here deploy a device that um, generates uh, three pickups after a short delay um, so it's three pickup types health ammo and energy it also says here um, empower health orbs and universal ammo packs and ng orbs okay so those are the addition towards it so it won't tell you see the, the this is where you have to use your own judgment it won't tell you the time ratio for when it drops it you have to assess based on 
extra pickup chance and based on your power um, based on your power strength and duration so it's mostly based on your power strength and duration and looking at your extra pickup chance so the standard is one you will always know it will drop your drops every 10 seconds depending on how long your duration period is it will always drop every 10 seconds and you will always need to know that it's based solely for your extra pickups on power strength otherwise if it's if you don't have higher power strength you won't get that extra pickup chance now if you notice i did get an extra pickup chance um with regards to everything that i have uh, it wasn't just the standard you know two energies or two health and two um two um ammo i got an extra uh, pickup chance of an additional one as well so the standard would be for 30 seconds every 10 seconds you would get a drop but if you're lucky enough if you and if your drop chances past the halfway ratio you are able to get a fourth one um and that's what i did i'm i was able to get a fourth one because i have more than half a chance to get an extra drop up of two energies two health and two ammo so that that's what it means by extra pickup chance you have an extra chance to get an additional pickup it really should say an extra additional pickup if you have a pickup chance um if you if your pickup chance is above 50 or something like that it should have made it very simplified and very simple stupid uh, to say exactly what it is you know get an extra additional pickup chance if your percentage go beyond like 50 or, or or even 60 or something like that that that's all they need to say not just extra pickup chance based on increased percentage amount like but i guess it should have been obvious to anyone if you have like 25 percent pickup chance you, it's you're gonna get a low um ratio to actually pick it up if you have 50 you're gonna get a even higher uh ratio chance to get it up and beyond that you're at 75 it's it's more like the moment you get to 75 and above and i believe i believe the standard is you can't can't go beyond 75 anyway but the moment you go beyond 50 you will always get um that extra one more so i was already in 60 and then the mission is is skyrocketed to like 87 i guess based on the buffs of um i'm not sure if someone had a rhino to increase my power strength or maybe they did maybe it was a different warframe that was increasing my power strength but i was wondering why my extra pickup chance skyrocketed and that's because i probably got a buff from a fellow warframe to increase my ability strength and their synergy of their um, ability strength is affected on yours so that's also something to consider it's not simply about your pickup chance it's also about your synergy with other people so the higher your pickup chance is based on your strength level the more chance it will take for someone who has a, an ability that could buff your strength to increase that pickup strength by an even higher margin. My pickup chance went to 87% rather than from a standard of 62. So that's also something to consider. So this was the Protea Warframe. That's what her that was her kit within the mission. I am going to use that this um, Warframe on uh, level 100 mission. But on the level 100 mission, real quick, I'll do that really, really simple, stupid. I won't even be in a group of people. I'll go solo and I'll show how that works based on, wait, what was her? Duration is 128. That's the 16 second one. So the 16 second one is not that great um there you go okay so i'll use this one which has more duration and it should be skyrocketing my character um duration p by 38 seconds that means i have a whopping seven point something something seconds which is not good at all but at least your first ability lasts for a full 20 seconds rather than 16 seconds um which which is good either 
if you really think about it, 16, 17, 18, 19, an additional four seconds, what the hell is that? Um, so that's why I say it, it really depends on what you're trying to go for. Are those additional um, few seconds really necessary or is it power strength that's really necessary? To me, when you're fighting level 100 enemies, the difference between five additional seconds rather than not having five additional seconds is the difference between life and death. Um, so this is why I'm using this one in the level 100 fight rather than using the other one in the level 100 fight. All the way I keep it on adaptation and streamline for efficiency use so that I don't use up efficiency. Oh, I've, I've also um, need to mention you should have um, Arcane Ultimatum on simply because this is a weak Warframe and simply because you don't have steel fibers in here. Uh, you need something to boost your armor and that's why they have that in here. Because they will get past your shield, level 100s. So you need something to be your armor. If, you're, if your total focus is ability strength, you need something else to be your armor. Um, okay, so it doesn't really matter what mission I, I'm going to do. Every Steel Path mission goes from 80 to 100 anyway. I believe most of them goes from 100 anyway as, as a base. There is no 80. I think the weakest Steel Path mission is, um, is level 100. Okay, so I'll use this as an example. And it'll be a quick mission. I won't I won't stay too long on Protea. I just wanted to describe Protea because Protea can be a very complicated warframe to understand if you don't understand a kit properly. Um, so the the main secret to understand Protea is to understand her third ability. If you understand her time ratio for her third, then you can understand her time ratio for her second, then you'll understand her time ratio for her first so on and so forth their focus impressive give them all warriors death and like i said you don't need to use the fourth you don't need to use their second ability unless it's necessary like if you're taking heavy damage and you feel like you're about to die then you throw on the fourth but you don't want to wait too long because the mo just because the fourth is active doesn't mean that the fourth is going to go in into effect instantaneously. You need to know exactly when to turn it on. If you turn it on too early, it won't go into effect the, the way you want it to. If you turn it on too late, you could be dead. Not that hmm. interesting. I keep forgetting the level one hundred enemies. That's why people say melee is king in this game. trying to eat at my health. I'm not forgetting that 30 seconds of the first ability. The reason why they're getting stunned, that's why you have that 30 seconds. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Where, where are you? Where are you? Oh! Don't like the sound of that. Fourth. Okay, so that's a lot of casting off the third. I mean, a lot of casting off the first.
Don't like that at all. And once again. Come on. Got the health back, got the energy back. Let's go. Boom. Was about to die. Well, it doesn't even matter because guess what? That's why I said Protea is a questionable warframe. That's why I, I keep saying the same thing over and over. But that's why you have your second ability. When you start questioning certain things, man it's just draining your health so now you have to go to a nice little safe place see what I mean by um, you have to consider your efficiency as well as your your NG amount as well as your strength. Because even if you cast all three down or all four, doesn't necessarily mean it'll work um, effectively and kill all enemies in with enough time that you need it to do. In many cases, it's, it won't do jack squat. This damn, where's that Exumus? The one that's leeching my health. Great. Now I have to deal with him. Well, come on then. Come on then. Come on, where are you? over here there you go there you go then I'm here I'm ready to rock it's your own fault for trying to kill me while this dude is sucking my life oh, come on die you son of a bitch Still getting up? Jesus. Thank you. Alright, so that's how that works. Um, that was uh, one of Stalker's Acolytes. They're pretty beefy and they're no joke and they will kill you. And I kill them by myself using Protea's second weapon. Like, 
like you're supposed to do anyway when finding this guy um, using Protea. And your first ability was to stun him just a little, but he'll shake that off real easy. And um, primarily, you'll want to um, turn on your fourth ability the moment he starts to attack you. And jump around a couple of times. And always make sure the third ability is active around so you can see it. Because it will drop stuff every 10 seconds. But if you're fighting him and you're moving around, you just count the amount of 10 seconds. Um, he's trying to hit me. He's trying to hit me. You're playing Ring Around Roses. Ring Around Roses. If, you're, if your pot is over here, you can play Ring Around Roses here. He'll chase you. Oh, it's been 10 seconds. Okay, you go grab your health and your energy. And then throw up your second. And then throw up your first. And then throw up your fourth. Play Ring Around Rosie. Ring Around Rosie. Doing a, um, throw on your second. Doing more damage. Wait for the last 10 seconds. Grab that last energy. And then finish him off. Um, because remember, the second ability is your bread and butter for killing bosses. Even though your true bread and butter is your third ability. Um, first is for stunning. At least stun them a little bit. So your whole kit, the best part about um, um, Protea's whole kit is that they all synergize together. Um, she's not a perfect Warframe and she's kind of annoying in some ways. Um, so let me just leave this mission. Um, she's not a perfect Warframe. And she's kind of annoying in some ways, but at the same time, she's kind of golden in some other ways. So that's why I was saying she's a half and half Warframe. She's a mid Warframe to a high level Warframe. She's not all the way in high level, but she can get to high level if they fix her kit. Um, as you can see, I should not have died in that mission to that um, to that uh, Exumus enemy leeching off my health and those enemies surrounding me. Um, but thank God I didn't die multiple times because one, like I said before, you have to have that 145 range. Two, you have to have that strength high up. Three, you have to have that duration. If my duration was at 16 um, seconds, like it like it did with the last, like it did with the last one, I would probably have died at least three times, or at least if if I playing better than I was today which I wasn't playing better I was just showcasing um, I would have died twice but still twice is one more than you need so this is the all-rounder for Protea you don't have to worry too much about the efficiency because the, the energy is coming from energy here and you have to worry about casting multiple times um, as well because the energy is also coming from here arcing energize the only time you have to worry about um stuff like um uh, like efficiency like throwing efficiency like i have streamlined here is when your efficiency fall below like way below um the 85 percent marker it's in the 50 percent marker and below like if it's at 40 if it's at 30 if it's at 20 or if it's at 50 then you need to have on an efficiency mod because if you don't, then the amount of energy spent is ridiculous. So the base, the standard, if you're falling below, if you're going to be below 100% efficiency, you don't want to be any lower than 85%. I don't care who, who's pro gamer at anything. You go in with a Protea at 55% energy. This is the amount of energy you are going to be spent per ability. Um, this, your standard, which was now at the base of... Um, 25 has now been shot up by an additional 15 NG more. This is now at 72, which that 72 used to be, or the, the 70 range used to be for third. So if your second ability is now all the way at 70. So between your, your first and your second, you're already past um, 100. And then your third ability is 100 in and of itself. So with both the first, second, and the third, you already passed 200 energy. And with the like the, the fourth ability, that's already passed, um, you know, 300 plus, like almost near 400 energy. So you just subtract 400 plus um, energy from here, like almost, almost 450 
from here you only leave you with a um, hundred and something left i would say yeah around 100 and probably 150 160 that allows you to do both your first your second and i guess your third ability um that's it so if you cast your first you cast your second you cast your third and you cast your fourth the only time you'll be able to do your abilities again is just one more time before you're completely out of energy and because you have um i guess if you because you have arcing energize you're going to be gambling when you're going to get your arcing energize back um based on that so you basically had you're halving um well you're not halving you're 25 percent you're minusing 25 percent on your timer for when you're about to get energy back from your arcing energize so you're subtracting an additional 25 percent time period for getting energy back from your arcing energize so that could be the difference between life and death so you don't want to do that uh, if you're going to have low energy um and if you're going to have low efficiency and you're not that great of a player within warframe you're a standard throw on that streamline and make sure this is at 85. so as an all-rounder this is the all-rounder for protea this is the all-rounder for protea i just proved it in a mission fighting an acolyte by myself and i didn't die by the acolyte and i still had energy to spare yes i had to go into that room and drop that energy pad but that is only because um the the knock or the something like well not it wasn't a knock the exhumus enemy was draining my health and i didn't take care of him right away the one that had that little purple thing if i had taken care of him right away my my direct health that was being targeted um, by his exhumus um, elemental powers i wouldn't have died by him my sole objective was to i should have killed him right away that way i wouldn't need to drop energy pads for a second time i would have just had to drop it at the beginning when i first started the mission and boom kill him then focus on everybody else after so that's what you do you throw down your little first ability to crowd control everyone then you throw it down throw it down again for the dock enemy and when i mean throw it down again throw it down in front of him it won't affect them whatsoever because he's um he's an exhumist type um elemental exhumist type he will still be shooting at you so what you do to stun him since the first ability won't do any damage you'll throw on your second ability to knock him out of that um out of that power that he has on his body so that he can be stunned by your first ability so that's where the synergy between the first and the second work you throw down the first right in front of him it won't affect him then you throw down second directly in front of him to hit him with enough damage so that the first could start to stun him so that you start using your melee weapon to kill him and then go for that um, stealth kills once you see that little square bar pop up on his body you just do nothing but stealth kills afterward you don't keep trying to melee him so that's what i did for that other one that was draining my health and if you start seeing your health go down below again just throw on the third so wasted too much time on protea i won't be wasting too much time on because protea is very particular and protea is very um important to talk about how to use her abilities um proper i won't be doing that for trinity however because trinity is one of my main i have five mains and i have two that are my favorites my favorite is nyx and my favorite is siren but i have five in my top in my top mains i have five top mains five top mains one of those top mains is nyx one of those top mains is siren one of those top mains is trinity one of those top mains is volt and the other top main is um i would say it would be it would probably be yeah it would probably be rhino it would probably be rhino simply because not because he's a tanky warframe and he has the third ability to help everyone with the yell it will probably be he jumped into he became one of my main he wasn't before he became my main i start using him for the, all of 2022 
because of his stomp ability. If I put if I put natural talent on Rhino and I do stomp and I have 145 range, he was his stomp will be so super fast. He could do it multiple times. He could do at least three stomp within 10 seconds. Which means he could crowd, crowd control an entire area. And if you have 175 efficiency on a Rhino that crowd control an area of 145 um, with natural talent on, he could do that all day. He could do that all day. He doesn't even need to have... Um, high strength level on his body as long as he power strength on his body he doesn't have to worry about enemies knocking off his um iron skin because they'll be up in the air on the fourth with a 175 efficiency so um this is trinity i'm going straight into her because she's one of my top mains and there's a little i don't even need to speak with regards to her uh, she's there's little to explain about her because she's super badass and this is this is her all rounder right here. Actually, this is not her all rounder. All rounder. This is her uh, tank. This is yeah. This is her tank. Um, yeah, that that's her tank. If you have two fifty something, that's her tank. Uh, this is her all rounder. Yeah, this is her all rounder. And in the slot up here, supposed to you're supposed to have um, prime sure foot. Prime Sure Footed will go here. The only reason why Prime Sure Footed isn't here because this negative slot is here. Um, I have to replace this with something, but I don't want to replace it with something because I need this for her tank. So this has to be here. So Prime Sure Footed can't go here for her um, all rounder if you're going to have her as a tank. So this is the tank. So my suggestion is to build for this. Um, get two umbras and fill up those two slots with umbras once you have two complete umbra former slots filled you don't have to worry about things being negative like this anymore because you will have enough points to put your umbra um put your uh prime show for the hair if you have both umbra umbra slots for your trinity in place i only have one umbra strap umbra umbra slot for my trinity hair right now um, but I don't have a second. As you can see, this one is green in the upper right corner, but this one is empty. So once I get another umbra and put it on this trimity, I'll be able to put prime show for it in here. See, I'm able to put prime show for it in here now because there's no negative slots like there is in this one. This is the negative. This negative takes a lot from your capacity uh, capabilities. But like I said, this is the tank. This is the what you want to go for with regards to Trinity. This is the one I used on my tank um, CC um, all around the well, no, not my CC, my your tank build. This is the tank build, not a CC build, um, not an all around the build. This is your tank build for Trinity. Um, you use this when fighting any enemies that's level 100 or higher. And as long as you know how to use her kit, this will work nine times out of ten guaranteed why simply um, the tank synergized with both life um, well of life um, energy vampire link and bless when I say my top five warframe or my top tier warframe my best of best warframes why I only have five in my top my top warframe slot on five and only five is because those five can all use every single ability and all of those every single ability works people say trinity first ability doesn't work that's because they don't know how to use trinity whatsoever at all trinity has always been a god basically and not like she cannot die she can die she's she's more like a demigod you know she can die if you're not paying attention but if you are paying attention Nine times out of ten, she's never going to die. Nine times out of ten. In a mission of high-level Exumus enemy of level 100, and they're all surrounding you, like all surrounding you, and they're all shooting at you, you might die once out of so many enemies surrounding you. Because, I don't know, you might, you're not fast enough. 
but even if you're not fast enough and you're super slow and you don't know how to use her the most i will say if you have this build you might die twice if you really don't know what you're doing you're going to die three times but this is the type of warframe even with this build even if you're terrible you will still be able to use a spell and survive in this warframe so this is the build for the tank and this is the build for the all-rounder you don't have to put this on uh, actually i suggest i suggest you remove this i only have this on for eidolons um i only had that on because i wanted to fight an eidolon to be honest with you that's why that's on um what you could do in a situation like that you don't need to increase your duration anymore uh, you leave your efficiency where it is you throw in in this um all-rounder slot vampire leech and with vampire leech attached for this all-rounder you're good to go because what vampire leech does this augment excess energy replenish shields by 150 percent so whatever energy you get back from your enemy from your enemy whoever you're fighting it will replenish your shields and you'll never have to worry about your shields ever going down because it's always going to be replenished and you'll never have to worry about um your shields ever going down or you're ever running out of energy because this is not a warframe that runs out of energy this is a warframe that sole purpose is to always get energy on like nine 99.9 .9 of all warframes they're not their they their kit wasn't built for gaining energy like they're not like harrow or they're not like uh, i guess you could say they're not like protea they don't have energy as part of their inside of their kit to give them energy um most warframes don't have that she is in the top tier of warframes that their sole purpose is to get energy and to distribute energy to your fellow tenos um, by killing enemies that's why i'm saying this enemy it's hard for this enemy to die because not only can she get energy but she can use that energy to go back into her shields um, and it will be incredibly ridiculous for you to kill her because if her duration on her leech is on and it's at 140 41 you then look at her kit um you cast her fourth ability to replenish her shields that dura duration period lasts for about 18 seconds which is not that long if you think about it but it has a damage reduction of 75 but like i said this is not a tank the tank one is the duration period for the tank one will be a totally different story duration period for the tank one will be almost a full 30 seconds that's when you're you're doing something like long runs you would keep casting the the fourth ability and then eventually once the force is cast it eventually drains and drains and drains and go back to zero so it's not like it completely goes away it slowly start to die off in time like the numbers start to go down and the effect of the ability start to wear off so the damage reducting effect of 75 start to slowly wither away it doesn't just die out after the duration period is gone or when the duration period is completely dying down it slowly goes down as well while the duration period is almost going down but yeah you never have to worry about that either of oh yeah i have to use up 100 energy just to do that for 18 seconds that for or 25 seconds or 23 seconds or six seconds that sucks uh you, but you never have to worry about that because this warframe simply ability is to pull energy so you will always have energy the moment you see you need more than 50 percent energy inside of your little bar at the bottom right it's like what do you do you grab energy from the enemy and you keep grabbing energy from another enemy and then you grab energy from the next enemy all while shooting them or slashing them and you grab energy from the next enemy enemy and next thing you know you're at 100 percent energy without using any of your other abil uh, any of your other abilities you don't use well of life you don't you don't use um bless 
you only probably just keep on link to keep enemies from doing heavy damage on you because that's the whole point of the third ability any damage taken while link is active will be channeled to to enemy so while you're busy taking energy from enemy whatever they're doing to you will just bounce back from you and go directly to them so you're you know you're, you're just busy fishing and this is how she fish she just casts her, her, her um, second ability on the enemy and fish and then she pulls out energy from them all the while they're shooting you in the back trying to kill you while link is active what they're actually killing themselves so while she's fishing and there she's busy fishing link ability says leave her alone let her keep fishing and stop messing with her or, or stop hitting yourself that's what the link ability means link ability means or stop bothering her she's fishing she doesn't have time for that um that's why you want to have that the, your third ability's duration at least above 20 seconds for your all-rounder um that way if it runs out you will know it runs out because you'll start feel the damage but by the time you get enough energy which is first uh, you grab it on one enemy then you cast it on the next enemy and you cast it on the next enemy you will get your energy back so the only bad thing i got to say about the second ability though for for grabbing energy is the amount of energy you'll get back is based on ability strength so if your ability strength isn't high enough it'll take a while for you to get back the energy you need to fill up before that 20 seconds of that third link runs out so in order to solve that issue you would increase your ability strength which is the obvious so here is what it, what, what it's doing it says ng pulse uh cash cast on enemy i mean on on the enemy um range of uh 46 meters which is not that big a deal duration is 16.29 um, for it to be in effect and 38 percent no 38 energies pull from the enemy uh 38.75 specifically is pulled from the enemy you don't want 38.75 as pull from the enemy so obviously you'll want more but this is an all round the build remember, remember this is an all round the build so you don't have to do things and wait for the um for the enemy to give you more um for that 38 what you could do is simply cast it on the enemy get that 38.7 something back kill the enemy cast it again on another enemy and get another 38 by something something back blah 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 and then cast it on another enemy and get another 38 point something without having to wait till it gives you more en energy based on time while he's still stunned for how long 16.29 seconds you don't even have to wait for the 16.29 seconds you cast it on an enemy he goes into this little animation shows right here he you start getting energy back but you don't have to wait for it you just get the amount that you need kill him do it fast enough do it on another enemy kill that secondary enemy do it on another enemy kill that other enemy and boom you're at 100 and all by the time that 16.29 seconds is over for that one enemy you've now pulled 38.75 of energy from multiple enemies which means you're now at max power so you don't have to stay on that one enemy so but if you just want that one enemy this is the best way to solve it if you really 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 want to pull from that one enemy and you want to get that energy that you need while at the same time has the keep you have the capabilities to so i'm going to do something risky i'm going to do something risky i'm going to drop it to flow i'm going to put on
because the standard you will want it to to be at 200 anyway. So it's not that bad. I mean, I only have at 155 because bless bless only takes um you only need to be at 155 to do bless damage reduction for bless is max 75. And if you're at 155, that's the smallest amount for bless. That's the only reason why. Otherwise, I would, if I can increase bless, I would give it more power strength. But you can increase bless um, regardless of how much power strength you give it. So now that I'm at 200 power strength, um, da -da 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 -da, it's gone up to 52.5 NG pulse. So now I'm getting 52.5, like double the, the standard base of 25, um, a little bit more than that, um, double that uh, per each enemy. So now I'll probably have to just cast it once on this enemy, wait for that 52.5 to get from the enemy um, within a duration period of 13.82 um, seconds, and then kill the enemy before the duration of 13.82. 82 seconds is over cast it on a second enemy and then get another 52.5 um, also during time period before that 13.82 seconds is over and boom I'm, I'm up to 104 that's all I gotta say about that two enemy most at power strength of 210 so I'll test this out uh, like I said, this is a little risky. Um, I just lowered the duration period from uh, the 16 seconds to 13 seconds. And um, I removed flow, I mean prime flow, and I put on flow, which means that my NG pool is now about 450. But I still should be fine. In fact, I should be more than fine for this all-rounder build because it, it is an all-rounder build. Uh, technically, I don't even need um, Streamline on. Um, as long as I have energy on, uh, arcing energize and uh, prime flow on, um, and that's where I could just throw on the um, throw this on. But reduce armor, forty-five percent enemy. Okay, so this. Minus 18 of armor and 45. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Do I, but do I want quick kills? Or do I want um, blessing on um, games, primary and secondary, critical chance? That's, that's even better. Okay, so. Not enough. It really sucks though. Um, okay, so I'll remove um, Prime Vigor and I'll put on. I mean, I wanted more shields, but it's no big deal. You know, oh, okay, Vital is already on, so okay, so I'll remove this. I wanted to keep it within the 900 range, but that's an easy solve. Um, let's put this here. There you go. Okay. So it's just dropped in shields from um, seven something to four. It's no big deal, not for her anyway. And now I'm able to do it. So there. So if you believe this is going to take away from you, because like say if you fight higher level enemies, level 100, and you'll need your shields, you don't need this to, to be in effect. Um, you'll need your energy. You don't want to um, your energy to go towards replenishing shields because most of your energy is going to use for abilities anyway. Then you could say that something like this won't be worth your time. Um, you prefer to do something like this to kill enemies faster by removing their armor. Um, but in certain cases, if you're pulling up enough energy back to yourself and having prime full on, your shields will always be up. And the only thing you have to be concerned with is casting your fourth ability, um, which is uh, the amount of NG you use to cast the fourth, and that's 100, and this is 4, 400, so that's 100, 75, okay. 
here. So that's more than a hundred, more than two hundred. Yeah. Okay. Let's say around three hundred. It's not so good, but like I said before, this is a Warframe that is an energy vampire drainer so she's not i'm not worried about her um doing uh draining energy from enemies my sole concern is how long can have this on running around killing enemies so they could kill themselves uh 18 seconds not not bad but i if i'm busy killing enemies i don't want to be bothered i'll obviously want to have more than 18 seconds um, but as a standard, you would go with this as your standard um, all around it. Like, I would say you could throw in more. Um, I don't know how I would describe this. Okay, so let me, you know what, let me try this. There, let's see what that does. okay that's good okay so yeah so this is your this is your all-rounder this is what you want to have for all rounds you don't have to worry about range with regards to this warframe this is an all-rounder that you could use in um any missions if you're near a warframe and you and you're at a 30 34 percent range and you try to use use your your bless it won't work in in all missions um actually what am i talking about this is not a good all-rounder. The range, you can't do that with regards to helping your fellow Tenos. Uh, that's where you have to have that base at 100. I need to concentrate. Okay, let me see, let me... At least a minimum of 100. If I can't get it there, then okay if you can't get it there have it here so this is all i could do um because why is called an all-rounder because everything all round must bounce off to a degree that's fair enough for you to use within every mission as well as supporting other character you can't call something an all-rounder if you're not useful to other people other than yourself it's not an all-rounder if you're just an all-rounder for yourself if you're saying that, well, it is a goal all-rounder uh, as a tank build uh, because I'm able to kill a lot of enemies, thus keeping everyone else alive. Um, but you're not actually giving any buffs or anything, so it's still kind of a selfish thing. Even though you are supporting a character from a kill point of view, you're not supporting characters from a buff point of view because you don't have enough range in order to do so. Um, so this this is what you're, you're going for for an all-rounder something that could give buff within a decent range just fall 10 percent below their amount but still enough if our warframe is close enough it'll give them buffs um and it does have enough energy to suck as many um uh energy out of an enemy at uh, more than 50 um, energies from an enemy so you can cast it twice on an enemy to get back 100 enemy um, energy uh, in return and you do have enough health in order to to not worry about enemies killing you uh, that are level 100 with a one shot and you don't have to worry about the shields being low at 480 because you can always cast your fourth ability and you can always um, stun enemies using your third ability or at least have them uh, stun themselves using your third ability link in order for their bullets to hit them back um, or and for them to eventually kill their their own cells for a full um for a full for full 18 seconds 18.42 seconds so that's all i got to say with regards to war um trinity um this was her all-rounder um capabilities all-rounder build mod builds and you put prime sure footed here as the standard as always put prime sure footed here and you could have if you don't want to have here and you only use this when you're fighting something like an eidolon 
But if you're going in regular missions um, with regular um, allies, the standard is always when you're using a healing warframe, you always want to use a healing um, uh, aura. And then you put your prime show for the in here. That's all I got to say about that. Now, why I say prime show for and not something like coaction drift to give more energy back? Because if if it's an all round mission, in most all round missions that you go through, like most of them, you'll want to keep your teammates alive. And if, let's say for instance, you get all three of you or all four, you get knocked down by an enemy, and then other enemies are shooting at you, you'll die pretty quickly because you can't jump back up. Um, but if you you're getting consistent health during that process, even if you get knocked down with a coaction drift on attached to a rejuvenate you're also um able to survive as as well longer um so it's very fickle in this situation um what do you want more in this slot based on survivability in the team um you able to jump up faster or are you able to give um give more energy back to your fellow teammates in order for them to survive. I only have this at, at the uh, Vazarin slot, Vazarin school, simply because I need this slot to be able to take um, the prime sure footed um, mod slot because prime sure footed is 16. Otherwise I wouldn't have this being a uh, Vazarin school uh, with that little triangle thing up at the side right there if i knew it's best to have something like coaction drift here all the reason i put prime show footed is because i knew that uh prime show footed takes up a lot of capacity slot and it would be necessary when you're fighting high level enemies in high places that you get knocked down a lot not just a little a lot um, so that's that for that and this was the bill for trinity all rounder and i'll test that in just one mission and then i'll get the hell out And then I'll move on to my next Warframe. And that next Warframe will be my last Warframe. Um, I'm, I like what I'm doing right now because if I just breeze through Warframe, I'm showcasing them just by their abilities and by their, um, their the frames, their design themselves, I wouldn't be able to explain in detail why certain things work and why others do not. And yes, you could do separate builds with regards to Warframe, with regards to that, but... Um, when I do builds for Warframe, I go into even greater depths than what I just went into. So what I'm just introducing is simply um, the icing on the cake. Not the cake that's made itself um, that has the frosting of the icing on it. I'm, what I'm saying here with regards to these Warframes are simply just the icing, not the cake itself. So I could, I could dive into much deeper depth with regards to this Warframe and what this Warframe can do. So I'm um, still path. I'll prove it again. And in all truth, I don't I don't need to prove anything with regards to this warframe. I know she could do um Exumus level enemies. You know what? I need to start farming some warframe parts. I'm not gonna waste my time uh not trying to get stuff when I could get stuff. So I'll do a survival run with, with people. And it's just showing the abilities of the Warframe. I don't really, I'm not really worried if the enemy is strong or not. Because I, I've done a video with regards to this Warframe. Um, fighting level 175. Um, yeah, fighting level 175 enemies. That are bombers and heavy gunners. And she's able to... Um, survive like 20, 20 bombers and 20 heavy gunners and she died once to the bomber group within the simulacrum and I believe she died also once to the heavy gunner group or maybe twice to the heavy gunner group within the simulacrum um, which means it doesn't even matter what mission she does she will still have enough revives to get towards the end anyway 
and those were level 175 enemies not level 100 like the um like the missions in steel path the steel path missions typically go from level 100 to level 150 i believe so that's how i know she'll survive easy Trying to choke you out. Hold on. I'm sending auxiliary life support. Open the relic, finish your mission, and we'll take a look inside.
When you need it, extraction is ready. So what's happening now, as you, as you can see with regards to this enemy, this enemy is being suspended in mid-air. Um, he was suspended in mid-air and then and he was being pulled from him. He was suspended in mid-air and energy was being pulled from him. Um, so how you do that is you first cast your second ability, then you cast your first ability um, in reverse order. Whereas the normal way, um, back in the day, it used to be you cast your first, then you cast your second, then you cast your third, and then you cast your fourth. But the, from the more up-to-date up trinity, um, of last year and this year, you cast your second, then you cast your first. Because if you try to cast your, your, um, your, I guess, how does it go? Uh, yeah, if you try to cast your first, and then you try to cast your second on top of your first, it will happen. You have to cast your second first, then you cast your first ability. So your second is your first ability, and your first will come in as your second ability. So that's how that works. And what that does, when they're suspended in mid-air, they are, one, doing two things. One, they're giving energy back to you. And two, they're, they're allowing you to gain shields from them. Because as the enemy is suspended in mid-air, you can now siphon off of their body, um, shields so if the enemy has shields you'll siphon shields off them but if the enemy has ar armor you'll siphon the armor off them to increase your armor so on some something like that i'm not sure how it works with grenier but i know based on the corrupted and corpus it's removing the enemy's shield when they're suspended in mid-air once you start to hit them so that's all i got to say with regards to trinity all her abilities synergize with each other one synergized with two, two synergized with three, because you said, well, how does three, um, two, one and two synergize with three? Simple. If you have on the, the third ability, you put the third ability on, you use it as your fellow distraction. And what it does is it links to all enemy, even suspended enemies in the air. Um, so if, if that's suspended in enemy, suspended enemy is in the air has happens to be like a, a knock or something like a really powerful enemy or a, or an exhumus enemy that was affected before by her second ability 
and they're now suspended in the air by the first. It was still aimed towards the enemy, and whatever damage is coming from one enemy will be deflect de um, deflected back into another enemy based on her uh, third ability. Um, so yeah, that's something to consider. I won't say for a guarantee for sure that that is what ha that's what happening. That is what was happening, but I will say for sure that all her abilities are synergized together and they work together. Um, doing something, it, they don't have to be physically doing something together um, in harmony, but they could be working with each other in harmony, um, in a harmonious way that's beneficial towards your play style. Um, just as having Link on, you could simply put Link on and say go fishing. Um, so it's synergized in that way that it allows you to focus on what you what else you want to do while it's doing its own thing um, so that's that's one thing same as the fourth the fourth ability synergizes with your other abilities because it is in association towards doing a thing related to those abilities so your your first ability is to drain shields off enemy once you hit them um, and that's fourth ability is related to getting gaining more shields by casting it um, just like the first ability is for gaining shields second ability is for gaining energy and third ability is for um, uh, repelling I guess ammo or bullets yeah repelling bullets back to the enemy so they kill themselves so each of these things are synergized with at least one or two things within the kit of the Trinity Warframe the fourth ability synergized with um, I, I guess you could say it synergized with how would I, how would I put it? It's seven, uh, the fourth ability synergized with the third because if you're using if let's say for instance you're using a weapon and that weapon is, is an explosive weapon, if you have on your third ability and it's and it's an explosive weapon and you aim it towards the ground at your feet and it's an explosive weapon. It would explode. It's going to explode and knock you back. But a percentage of that energy, a large percentage of that energy, is going to now be transferred from you getting knocked back into the enemy of choice. So if this person is not a good person or something like that, and you shoot, like say you shoot the grenade towards the ground, and you have your third ability on, your third ability soaks up that energy and goes towards the enemy that is locked on to so whatever damage you now take from you shooting the ground to hit yourself uh, is now going to be channeled towards an enemy and just like her third her third abilities her third ability says um any type of damage effect going towards her um is channeled back towards an enemy so if she's shooting something at her feet and it goes towards her she obviously can't kill her own self because she's the one shooting it so what it will do because it's not going to allow her to kill her own self it's going to then deflect on to the nearest enemy within the vicinity and kill them so once that happens they're dead they're dead with regards to that and thus you then use your fourth ability to replenish whatever shields that you use to damage your own self, your own Warframe, to do an ability so you can kill other enemies. So you could kind of fool the game in a way in order to do things that you don't want, that it doesn't want to do, but you manage to get it to do what you want it to do. You want to kill a lot of enemies in a room, you, but you want to do it in the fastest way you could possibly think about, and the fastest way you could possibly think about is you actually doing physical explosive damage to yourself while your third ability is on knowing full well that it will transfer a certain amount of that energy towards an enemy and if you calculate how much energy it's going to do um, it will go directly towards them what will happen directly after is uh, you now have a very powerful warframe that you can always use your fourth on in order to bring back guess you could say bring back to life um 
how, how would I describe it? Bring back to life your own personal play style, or bring bring back to life a, like a dead a dead play style that you originally stated for yourself when you originally played the character Trinity, and or you you start to get disinterested with Warframe, but you wanted to have a good play style. Well, this is a good play style. That will that will be something that you use to bring back your dead play style to a more enjoyable play style. Um, so that's. That's how her fourth ability synergize with a third. Um, cast it down to replenish your um, shields back. Uh, based on the damage you do to yourself using your explosive. Um, that's channeled towards an enemy since the third ability is on anyway. So it's not like you'll completely kill yourself. Because explosive enemies can't kill you anyway. Um, they'll just knock you back. So. But. For the enemy, however, it's not going to be a knockback. It's actually going to be physical damage. So as long as you could transfer that in order to uh, transfer what you're doing towards an enemy and they take uh, that damage, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, that's all i got to say with regards to Trinity. My, my words are starting to um, mumble. My, my words are mumbling right now because I'm starting to get tired. But I want to move on to my last Warframe before I completely start to fall asleep and get tired. So it's very important to s describe and say these things for what these Warframes are and describe them in detail. Because if you don't understand how they synergize and how they work, you will always have issues. You will say, well, that doesn't work with that. That doesn't work with this. But every single one of her abilities synergize together. Turn third on, cast your explosive abilities. It knocks you back, they knock back um, uh, power or, or bullets or whatever, or, or explosion goes towards the enemy, but at the same time it knocks down your shields, throw on your fourth ability, your shields now come back up, whatever damage to your health is now re be replenished, uh, and bada bing bada boom, you keep doing that to the next enemy. Um, so they all fuse together in one harmonious way. Uh, so that was the Warframe Trinity and this was her kit for her um, all-rounder right here screenshot it take a take a picture um, record a video um, this is what you would do with regards to this Warframe being an all-rounder not a tank not a long CC but a standard base Warframe for doing all around their mission. Obviously you will want to switch up between what you find to be most interesting and you could take um, Gladiator uh, Resolve and you could take Stretch and you could get rid of both of these and put something in their place. But for these other mods right here, no, you wouldn't want to do that because these two together synergize and make you have more ability strength. And this one, it gives you more strength as well. And most people say, well, why don't you just throw in Blind Rage with this? Blind Rage takes your efficiency down, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that whatsoever. Because if you do that, and you're within the 55% ratio, the only ability you'll be able to do effectively that consistently over and over again will probably be your first and your second ability only. You won't be able to probably do your third when you need to do it if you're going to fall below a certain part and only have... 55% uh, so that was Trinity Warframe now the next Warframe I'm going to and the last for tonight will, will be um, oh man really getting tired here I should really you know I'll close it off nice and easy I'll close it off nice and easy to understand real easy um, a Warframe that's not complicated in the size not too complicated, but it's very OP. Very OP, but not too complicated. Problem is that every Warframe and like 80% of Warframes are complicated. Or no, not even 70% of Warframes are complicated. But 70% of Warframes that are complicated is still complicated because it's already past the halfway mark. You have to understand every single one of their abilities. So I'm going to go for 
Valkyr. I'm going to show Valkyr's um, overall kit, what mods I have on her, so on and so forth. So this is Valkyr. Yeah, I'm really getting sleepy. Really getting sleepy. When I start slurring words and I start repeating things, it's because I'm getting sleepy. So, yeah, this is this is Valkyr. First ability is good, especially if you want to get to an area that's far away, or you want to pull an enemy that's far away, and you want to take care of them quick. First ability is good. That's that, and now I'm gonna test it out. Actually, now I'm gonna show the mods, and this is these are the mods. Now, this Warframe, unlike many Warframe, does not need that 200. Does not need that 200, and so let me explain real quick. This is this Warframe base. This Warframe base is 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Same as before. It's just a little bit below the speed ratio for the other war, um, Warframe. And its shields are complete garbage. And its health is standard. And its armor is standard. And its, I mean, its energy is standard. And its armor is, is its bread and butter. So this is an armor-based Warframe. So in order to get the best out of your armor, and since this is armor-based Warframe, focus is being a tank. So it's basically telling you what this Warframe is by showing that it has more armor than anything else. It's telling you that this Warframe is a tank. So this is the setup. I can't think of anything else that's better than this for an all-rounder. You have the Energize, you have the, since she's a melee Warframe, you go for melee, and you add the Question Drift for more aura strength. And... Thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Nope, that, that's it. Arcane Strike works with melee. Um, and this is a melee based Warframe. This is not a, a Warframe that shoots. It's more like a Warframe that attacks. Right? This Warframe can shoot, but it's more of an attacker Warframe. I don't know. I believe this is the best. So I won't. I won't uh, waste too much time. If you got 175, if you got 100 all around range, 100 on strength, and anywhere from 100 to 130 on duration, you're solid. You're good to go. You're easy peasy, lemon squeezy, or lime and squeezy. Oh, uh, yeah. So 175 is your goal. Your goal will always be 175. No higher, no lower. Because one, for one, you can't go beyond 175 in efficiency anyway. So the maxed out efficiency is always going to be 175. And for um, energy, yeah, this is it. This is it. I won't dive too much deeper. This is the Valkyrie you want for your all rounder. No, no if ands or buts about it. You want an all rounder. You want lots of armor. You want good energy. You want good health. Um, this is not a shield warframe, so you don't gotta worry about shields. Um, you want good efficiency. So this is the bell. 
Just remember this build and you should be fine. Just remember, always turn on the fourth ability, which is the uh, immortal body ability, when you're in a dire pickle, when you're in the deep pickle. Never keep it on for a long time because the fourth ability um, is a draining ability. It drains based on per second. From 0 0.63 to 3.75. So this is a draining ability. It'll drain your ability over time. Trying to think of anything else. No, there's nothing else. Okay, so I'll test it. I don't feel like dozing off here at the wheel. So I'll test it on regular um, mission. There's no need for me to do uh, Exumus uh, high level missions anymore. I'll do a quick capture and I'll call it a day. And tomorrow I'll, if I could get off five, I'll get off five. But if I could get off another three, I'll do so. A standard is every um wednesday around 9 30 to um uh to about 12 uh, or 1 well more more like to like to about 12 30 9 30 12 30 i i get on twitch and i play warframe but if i'm not playing on twitch on wednesdays at 9 30 to 12 30 or saturdays from 9 30 to um, 12 30 or sundays from 9 30 to 12 30 I'm on YouTube on those other days. If I'm not on Twitch Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, then I'm live broadcasting on I'm live broadcasting on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday on YouTube. So, is YouTube better than uh, Twitch? Hell no. Uh, when it comes to streaming, but I don't have to ever worry about my network going down. Um, too much anyway plus uh, I I prefer to play Warframe on Twitch anyway and then play other games on different ones but who knows um, those days that I have set for playing Warframes it was 9 30 to 10 30 I mean to 12 30 those are the standards um, anyway so if I play more games on Twitch, if I play more games on Twitch, um, work. We'll interrogate the captive back at base. Your part is done here, Kenno. If I play more games on Twitch, um, anyway, as a as a as a random thing to do, not not as a, a standard, I put it down on a piece of paper and say, this is the time I'm going to do this at all times on on all days these are the days i will always do this if if i don't state it as the days i always do it then it'll never happen on those days always the only thing that will always be on are the days i specifically say that those will be the days i'll play it for all you know come monday and tuesday i don't play on um on youtube at all i play on twitch But I just decide to play on um, Twitch instead of uh, play on YouTube, simply because of the decision. Okay, so now I'll show the ability. And I'll shut up and I'll do the mission. I'll show all four. I just want to make sure I collect these fishes.
Excellent work. We'll interrogate the captive back at base. Your part is done here, Tenno.